EA Sports. Ah, EA Sports Big, my favorite studio, uh, makers of the SSX games. Hey everyone, this is Insetic, and this is Freak Style, and I've got a couple co-commentators with me. Uh, this is Digerus here. And I'm Thornbrain. And Freak Style was a game released in the middle of all the other SSX games by the same studio. That's where you've uh, heard the studio name. Trying to be that same exact type of game, but on motorcycles instead. And obviously, no one remembers Freak Style, so something went wrong along the way. However, it did become a PS2 greatest hits. Like, my box has greatest hits on the top of it. Even though I've well, never... Sorry. That's just purely... Uh, sales numbers. Even though I've yeah, even though I've never heard anything about it. This is yeah. circuit. We're gonna test all your skills today. First some racing, then some freestyle. And if you can make it that far, it's back to racing freestyle. But the only way to survive is to win and score massive points. If you think you're prepared, guess again. These ain't the little trails and hills you're used to tearing up. We're gonna make you jump over molten steel, dodge stray rockets, and battle creepy little gnomes. Want to become a freak style legend? Do you think you got what it takes? Nothing says hardcore like garden gnomes. <laughs> Seriously, that's uh, that is, I'm just gonna say that's one of the weirder little levels. So, of course, you've got your uh, your cast of characters. These were all apparently like actual professional motorcycle uh, or like stunt cyclists, but. Obviously, they've been played up for this game. Also, you only have four unlocked at the beginning, but I really didn't want to show just, you know, the original person, because everyone picks him. So I uh, played through, and I want to show off one of the later people. Also, note their stats. There are five stats in this game. Speed, boost, control, jumping, and landing. Speed and boost help control how fast you'll go, basically your top speed and your acceleration. Control is how well you turn. Jumping is how high you go in the air. There's sort of an interesting jumping mechanic in this game. And of course, landing is how well you can land something that you probably shouldn't have landed in the first place. At the start, you only have one outfit, and if you move over to the other outfits, the guy tells you, no, that's not unlocked yet. So then there's your basic top four buttons trick system. All of the one button and two button tricks are the same for each rider, but the three button tricks are different, not only for each rider, but also for each bike you unlock. And also there are combos, which will be integral to getting high scores when we get to the second half of the game. All of them have sort of witty names based on the tricks you need to do, like the buzzer for doing three buzz cuts, or the super twins for doing two supermans in one jump. Again, there are more than one bike for each character, and the later ones have better stats, but you only have one at the beginning. And this is the first track that we have to pick. So this is Monumental Megaplex. Amigos, and welcome to Monumental Motoplex. Motoplex, sorry. If you can stay on track in the caves, you'll be a moto legend. No, I'm not forgiving that. The only way to win is to fear nothing and risk everything. And since I don't want to show off all three races, we just fade ahead to the final. What a great day for a ride. You it won't be. Normally, if you have that character interaction in front of a final race, you would unlock that character after beating the level. However, I have all the characters in this file, so it'll just be any random character. Now, what's the difference between the final race and any other race? In the... okay, each level has three heats, basically. You know, like quarterfinal, semifinal, final. In the first two, you just have to get third place or above to advance, but in the final race, you have to get first place. So it's, again, much like the SSX series and probably much like most racing games, you know, full car games. 
So, think about free sti- freaks, freak style. In the bottom left, you see we have a couple bars that are filling up. The bar on the right is your standard boost bar. You hold square to uh, boost. And then the bar on the left, which fills up with red, is a different bar that once you fill it to the top will do something cool. Wink. <laughs> X is the gas. You never want to not hold X. Square, I think, is the brake, but obviously I've never had to hold the brakes. And then you you want to race to the next jump, jump off of it, and do cool tricks with the shoulder buttons. And if This doesn't you... seem like a game that wants you to break. Yeah. <laughs> And if you see flaming hoops with glass in the middle of them, you crash through those and get bonus points. Now I filled up the uh, red bar, and that face is getting kind of wonky at me. What I need to do is head to the nearest jump and push all four buttons on the top for a special four-button trick. Because bullet time. (laughs) And once you land that, you freak out and have couple seconds of infinite boost this is just the first level so there's the jumps aren't close enough together to really show that off but if you do a bigger trick when you first do the freak out like if i did more than just that one trick i'd get more seconds of boost the max is 15 seconds and also if you get to a jump before you're done with that freak out thing and you do another trick the the boost continues you get more seconds so in the later levels you can actually keep going for you know 40 or so seconds with unlimited boost you barely made that one yeah you (laughs) you get you get more points for going on the bottom right there but it's not advised until you uh, come back to this course with better stats so the Sorry, the tricking system is, again, much like lots of other games at this time. You have a trick, and then you can tweak that trick. The original trick you can hold as long as you want to, but the tweaked trick has a set time. And also, the combo system. See, I just did a triple Cordova, or a big back bender. This is, this is sort of one of the faults of the game, because the tricks, they take a while to do. And the combos, you only really have short ones and long ones. Like, you have ones you can basically do off the smallest of jumps, and then you have ones that you need your jumping stat up full, and you can only do off the biggest jump in the game. And there's not many areas to do that, but if you do a combo, you get more points, you get more boost, and your freakout bar fills up more, so it's suggested that you learn those and figure out when you can do them. Now, the stats, are they kind of like the Tony Hawk and Sean Palmer in that you get more stats as you progress and then you can uh, add them to whichever one you want? Yeah, the stat, your stats start out low and then you win races and you get stat points. And then after each race in the super career, you can improve your stats in some way. So again, doing combos and getting more of a freakout bar means you have more chance to time your freakouts accordingly. <laughs> that that sounds weird in any other context of that sentence. <laughs> but yeah, doing two of those signature tricks gives me the full 15 seconds of extra boost, and then doing this combo, which takes a while to do, gives me another 15 seconds. Oh. So, and usually races... They, they might not come down to a well-timed use of the freakout, but they'll be darn close if you don't. So, luckily that freakout puts us many, many seconds ahead of everyone else. We're not many, many, only seven. That's another thing of this game. It's a little unforgiving. Like, oftentimes there are six-minute, <laughs> seven-minute races, and they'll be determined by two or three seconds. Like, if you mess up, you pretty much need to restart. Yeah, here I've got more stats, and another thing about this game is that if you have a high stat and you try to increase it even more, it takes more out of the available bar to increase it. Like, at the end of jumping, I wanted to increase it by half of a bar, and it took up three of those. 
Hmm. So, um, it's it's got like this strategic element to it in a way. So yeah, I guess you don't increase your strengths too much, and you and the game wants you to compensate for your weaknesses. You can either max something up completely, or you can kind of be a middleman in everything. However, my uh, my method for this LP is to increase jumping quickly and increase that as much as I want to because the uh, the other AI sort of stay at your speed. You know, if you don't increase speed or boost at all, they w won't really. Like, they'll be pretty much as slow or as fast as you are. So I just want to increase jumping so I can get more time to do more tricks. And so that's been it for uh, Freak Style Episode 1. Make sure to join me next time for Episode 2 when I take on the Crust Belt.